I love when she goes swimming. Oh, I'm gonna get in there with her as well. There you go, she loves the water, my little gal. There she goes, good girl, go on. I mean, I can't imagine a world where I wasn't able to have skinks as a kid and have my turtles. So what does that mean, guys? What does it mean for the future of Buttercup? Oh, here she is. Oh God, she's heavy. Hey, what's going on everyone? Kenan here, and I'm hanging out with Princess Buttercup today. We're gonna get her out and uh, get her some exercise in the pond, and I'm gonna fill you in on some really, really good news. Oh, she's a heavy girl. Let's get her over here so she can just start exploring, and I can start telling you guys what's going on. Well, it turns out that the iguana and tegu ban has been deemed unconstitutional. Very, very good news for everyone who owns these animals here in Florida. So basically guys, why does that involve buttercup? Well, in addition to the Florida iguana and tegu ban, they also were gonna do away with the conditional species program, which is how I'm able to house and keep Princess Buttercup. She is considered a conditional species along with the rock python, the green anaconda, the reticulated python, and of course, uh, I think both species of anaconda, and then the Burmese python as well. So what's been going on is, if you've been following the channel, you know that I've actually had some concerns about what am I gonna be able to do with Buttercup? Because in this bill that the Florida State Legislature enacted they included in the ban these snakes and i was calling fish and wildlife trying to figure out how am i going to be able to keep this animal that i've had for seven eight years um they couldn't really give me an answer uh they they really had no solid answer i had to become maybe a uh open to the public uh facility where people would come and kind of see the snake uh, in some kind of display situation and what I've been doing is for the last few years, how I'm able to keep this animal is I use it for educational purposes uh, on the channel. And that's what's going on. But let me talk to you a little bit about what's happened and why we have some good news, but why we also must remain vigilant. Uh, so what happened was USA Arc Florida got involved in this because they deemed this uh, an unfair rule change because here in Florida, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission has the authority to make rules pertaining to captive wildlife. And what happened and why some think it was some backroom dealings, uh, you know, off the record, there's no proof of it, but they kind of think a deal was struck with some state legislators and some people in FWC to where they, the legislature, would make this law outlawing tegus and iguanas and the Burmese pythons and so on so that the Fish and Wildlife Commission wouldn't have to go through all of its public forums. They could just make the law, the state legislature could make the law and it's a law and they didn't think anyone would fight it. Well, it turns out that reptile lovers definitely got together with US Arc and they fought it because it turns out this rule was illegal. It's illegal because uh, the state constitution of Florida says fish and wildlife are the only ones that can make rules regarding wildlife, not the state legislature. So that's what happened and we fought it and won. A judge deemed that the law was unconstitutional. So unconstitutional, uh, not in the United States, not a federal constitution, but a state constitution that we have here in Florida. Um, so what does that mean? Well, what it means is we won a small battle and basically now what has to happen is fish and wildlife can appeal if they'd like to. Uh, but what's going to happen now, guys, is fish and wildlife, they're going to, they can still come out with their own rule because they are the ones that are legally able to make rules regarding 
wildlife, as I've said a few times already in this video. I want to kind of get her, get her out and kind of show her the water and have her see if she feels like swimming a little bit. I love when she goes swimming. Oh, I'm going to get in there with her as well. But she hasn't been out in a while, so I really want to get her some exercise. There you go, boo-boo. There you go. She loves the water, my little gal. She is something. There she goes. Good girl. Go on. She's going to go do her thing, and I'm going to keep talking. So basically, guys, what happens is Fish and Wildlife now has to either appeal it or they're going to start doing their own rule changes. Now, they can go ahead and try and, you know, ban these animals themselves. So how is that a victory? Well, the victory is they can't just do it without having public forums, if you understand my meaning. So that means we're now going to have a chance that we didn't have before with these rules. Uh, they just tried to sneak this rule in and uh, that's just not going to happen this time. So what's going to happen is they're going to have public forums and they're going to have to hear from what they consider stakeholders. Stakeholders are folks like you and me who have these animals and have had these animals for a long time. So many of you guys would comment on some of the preceding um, kind of some of the preceding videos saying that, well, Kenan, you're a conservationist. Why is it, why would you want uh, these invasive species to be able to be kept? And I'm gonna break it down for you right now, why? The reason that we have the problems we have in Florida with iguanas and tegus and the, um, the, the pythons, just Burmese pythons, by the way, um, the reason we have those problems is because Fish and Wildlife didn't work with the private sector, with the industry of, of reptile keepers. Um, once we enacted the conditional species program, there weren't more new releases of animals because the people that had them had them microchipped. We get inspected, we pay into the uh, program with our fees for the license. Uh, it's better all around. When you make something banned, you turn normal people into criminals and that's never good because people are always going to want uh, to keep animals and by banning them you're going to be hurting uh, the environment more because now someone doesn't have the uh, legal authority to have those animals and what will happen is they're going to dump them and truth be told guys yes in a way, the pet industry was involved in releasing the Burmese pythons, but it was due to an act of God. It was due to a giant hurricane. Hurricane Andrew is where most of these animals got released. Um, the, the entire area of Homestead was obliterated, and that's how these Burmese pythons got out there. Now, iguanas is a more tricky story. There are photos in the 30s of iguanas in the Keys. Okay, you mean tell me in the 30s there were a lot of people that had pet iguanas and let them go? I don't think that's the case. I think these animals from time to time naturally would be introduced to Florida because of hurricanes and rafting. We know that iguanas made it to the Galapagos. We know that iguanas, green iguanas, have made it to some Caribbean islands, not by the pet trade, but by rafting, by storms, washing them out from the mainland, then the animals wind up uh, in areas uh, that they don't normally colonize or they don't normally exist, but then can colonize. We see it also with the, um, the redfoot tortoise in Trinidad. That's not an area that they were historically found, but due to rafting and due to human movement, uh, those animals did wind up there. So the iguana thing is really, really tricky to say that it doesn't belong in Florida. Now the tegu for sure doesn't belong in Florida, uh, especially the black and white, the Argentinian black and white tegu. Let's see where this, where this little beauty has gone. But we do find that animal here now in certain areas of South Florida in Miami and also they've been found now in Georgia because these guys have uh, a bit of a cold tolerance. Uh, the good old, the good old tegu that is. Oh yeah, let's get in the water, I guess. We're gonna get in this water. Oh, nice and warm after the evening. Oh, yeah, that's better. You guys can kind of see her while I chat with you guys about what's going on. So 
here she is. She's such a beautiful gal. Just kind of hanging out, doing her thing. Like I said, I like to get her out. It's, it's really fun to get this animal out in the pond where she can kind of enjoy herself and just act like a natural snake. Uh, the other thing, guys, that's been going on with this iguana ban and tegu ban is, you know, a ban is very general. It's not actually taking into consideration that most of the people that are breeding iguanas are not breeding uh, what we would consider, you know, normal green iguanas. A lot of them are kind of breeding morphs. Uh, these are, for all intents and purposes, domesticated animals or altered animals that really wouldn't survive in the wild unless they are hets where they look normal, um, but they carry the genes for uh, albinism or blue iguana or, you know, I, I don't really get too into that thing, but the reality is, is that these animals are bred specifically for pets. Um, you can almost call them designer animals. So how is that fair really to kind of penalize everyone for animals that really aren't able to survive in the wild and they aren't really uh, part of the problem. I always think that working with our government and those institutions like Fish and Wildlife is the best way to get to a, um, you know, kind of a consensus or to a place where we can do better work. Um, the ban also made it illegal for somebody to grab an iguana and bring it out or to hunt them and, you know, without special permits, uh, you know, you couldn't just get them and get them out of the environment. You can't even put your hands on them. Um, that's counterproductive also. If you're really looking to eradicate them in the wild, which I gotta tell you is gonna be impossible, uh, is because, you know, now they're saying that you can't even touch these animals and, uh, you know, that kind of stinks. So I am not one who would wanna hunt them, but there are people out there that hunt them. They eat them, uh, they remove them from the environment. I think that's a good idea. Uh, you know, you have to have a give and take but it's uh, not something that I would do personally. Uh, as you guys have seen, I've had iguanas here in my backyard. Um, you know, it doesn't bother me. Uh, at the, the reality is, guys, uh, these are they're non-native animals, you, which is debatable, as I mentioned before, that are in disturbed habitat, eating non-native plants. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of interesting why people got so freaked out. Um, and I'll tell you why they got so freaked out. You get all these folks down in Boca. Uh, they come from New York. I'm a New Yorker myself. I moved down to Florida, but I moved down not just for the weather. I moved down because I can see really cool animals. Oh, she's having a drink right now, by the way. She's drinking. Look at that gal. She's having a bit of a drink from the pond. But as I was saying, I moved down here to kind of be able to see cool animals in the wild. Uh, see iguanas, see alligators, see all these interesting animals that I've always been uh, enamored by. And unfortunately, most people that come down and live in Boca spend millions of dollars on these, you know, waterfront properties. They buy these boats, they have the docks. And I guess seeing giant lizards hanging out on your dock or on your yacht and then leaving giant turds is uh, a little bit disconcerting. Um, now, I'm not... I don't want to sound like too much of an apologist, but we are an animal loving channel. We are a reptile loving channel. And I know most of you guys out there are pretty darn stoked if you see an iguana down here in Florida while on vacation. The reality is they don't, you know, whether it's arguable or not, uh, if from time to time they've colonized areas of Florida, um, would they have colonized it um, without man's help in greater numbers? I don't know. But the reality is um, they don't, you could argue that they don't belong here in Florida and they are invasive. So I kind of am in the middle. Uh, I've, I've always kind of walked that line. I'm kind of a middle, a middle ground guy in all things where I think a total ban would not help out. Um, I think working with Fish and Wildlife to come up with rules, permitting system to own the animals, much like the conditional species program, which has been successful since it's been implemented, um, because there is a, a level of um, criteria that you have to meet. Uh, there is a procedure that you also have to meet when it comes to uh, hurricanes and housing the animals, and you have to keep up these standards, which is extremely important. 
and it's something that I think really helps out uh, for the industry, for the keepers, and for uh, the animals themselves. Uh, as you guys know, uh, Buttercup is a, is a morph. She was an animal that was given to me about, I believe it was seven years ago. It could be eight, I don't really remember. I have to look on my permits, but she was given to me by a gentleman, Jay Flynn. Uh, he loved her, he couldn't keep her any longer because of housing requirements and because of the permitting process, the conditioned species permits, um, as well as some health issues he was dealing with. She was large. Uh, she's a very heavy snake. You got to be in good shape if you want to move her, if you want to kind of handle her. Um, but what happened is he gave her to me through Bush Wildlife, which I've been involved with for a long time. And I just think, you know, this is a great animal that's become an ambassador of the channel uh, of her species. I do like to talk about the fact that these animals don't belong, uh, especially Burmese pythons. They do not belong in South Florida. But the majority of them, as I mentioned earlier in the video, were released because of Hurricane Andrew. Uh, very few are released, um, you know, uh, as, as unwanted pets. It's, it's only when you ban these animals that we saw lots more people dumping them, catching more people dumping the animals because they were afraid or they didn't want to pay for the permits. And these weren't serious owners. Uh, to begin with. So banning them is not a good idea, which is why Fish and Wildlife has their amnesty days. They have these days where no questions asked. If you want to drop off the animal, you'll not be penalized. And that's a good thing. And they'll either try and find a home for those animals through people like myself, or they will be humanely euthanized. Again, that's just the way it's got to be. Um, we are always our own worst enemies. Uh, even reptile people, you know, I mean, a lot of them get an animal that they really shouldn't have. It's an impulse buy. And I think you guys now know, I think in this day and age, many of us that watch this channel or Chandler's channel, uh, he's a reputable guy. Uh, you know, we try and educate you on the realities of keeping these animals and what it entails and how we can be more responsible as reptile lovers and reptile keepers. Um, I will forever be a fan and a proponent of being able to keep these animals. Um, because the problem is when you start to ban one type of animal, uh, it's, it, is a, it is a complete um, domino effect. More laws get made, more bans are enacted, and then pretty soon, I know you won't believe it, but pretty darn soon, you're not able to have a leopard gecko. And I know a lot of you might laugh, but that is something that could totally happen. They could make a complete ban on any reptiles that we have here uh, that, that we might be able to keep uh, in Florida or as a pet. And that is not something I want to see happen because I really think having a pet uh, reptile or amphibian or bird, if it is an animal, that was produced in captivity by a reputable breeder, purchased at a reputable shop, I think it's a good thing for young people. I mean, I can't imagine a world where I wasn't able to have skinks as a kid and have my turtles. I don't think I'd be as, as much of a proponent for nature as I am. And I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. Uh, you know, you heard my, my views. I don't think these animals are... Um, the demons we make them out to be. I don't think they should be banned. Some of you may disagree and that's totally okay, man. It doesn't bother me when I, I see comments where people disagree. I think it's healthy if we disagree in a constructive way. Um, but my thought is a ban doesn't really work um, because it just turns people into criminals and, um, and it's good people. So I don't want to be a criminal. Uh, but I know I wasn't going to euthanize this gal. So what does that mean, guys? What does it mean for the future of Buttercup? Well, as I mentioned, Fish and Wildlife is probably getting their ducks in a row. Uh, they can appeal, but it doesn't seem likely that they will because it is pretty much a cut and dry situation as far as the Florida State Legislature. Um, but they will go and start to enact uh, their own rule about perhaps banning tegus and iguanas. Uh, hopefully you guys will be um, kind of more enthusiastic to see that we actually came together. And I have to thank all of you that donated to USA Arc Florida.
that was huge guys it really really was huge um you know usa arc florida wanted me to tell you guys thank you because it was a couple of us youtubers out there i know tyler made a video chandler made a video we got our our friends out there that watch those videos really motivated because this wasn't just going to be a florida problem it would have reverberated out into the general industry or affect your ability to have certain animals um so i think that is incredible that you all band together and i just wanted to thank you guys for that um we are going to keep you in the loop i know this is now the third video i've made on this but it's an important video i wanted to kind of get all my thoughts out on it because i have read some of your comments and i know some of you uh think that it's at odds with conservation and it's not because i believe in personal responsibility i believe in working with our government because guys we are our government make no mistake about that it is our involvement it is our tax dollars that enable the government to function and we have to become more involved in the uh issues that really um mean something to us and obviously my ability to keep buttercup alive is a very important issue to me she's so cute by the way i want to kind of get up closer to her she's just it's just amazing to see her uh stretched out in this beautiful natural setting i think that that's something that i um i'm very thankful for uh and i just i'm happy i can give this animal this kind of life um it's what they deserve you know it's what they deserve buttercup is not a wild caught um burmese python out of the everglades uh, she's not released into the wild it would seem a shame to have to euthanize such a beautiful creature who's done such a fantastic job teaching everyone out there who watches the channel about them you know um i'm happy to work with fish and wildlife I have worked with Fish and Wildlife when it comes to uh, being chain of custody, when there are animals that have been uh, illegally smuggled into the state. I've been a place where they keep the animals. I've worked with them. Uh, once those court cases have been uh, come to, you know, once they've been solved or finished, I'm the guy that then will either redistribute animals to the proper zoos and or um, facilities. Uh, like my my own here here she is she's just hanging out um so that's a good thing that we do with fish and wildlife don't you think um i want to continue that relationship i want to get more involved and talk to the folks in tallahassee and let them know that not all youtubers are just kind of unboxing animals or doing things like that or just buying animals for the sake of views we're here to really be educators at least that's my i can only really speak to myself um, I'm here to educate and have fun and kind of get people excited about our natural world. And I think it's amazing that we can see these animals here, that I have the access to show you these animals and care for them and kind of do the right thing by them and by the laws and the government to, um, to, to educate you guys. So you don't have to go all the way to Asia to see them. Uh, you know, you can see how they're kept right here in a virtual situation and now with covid uh virtual situations are going to be more and more important so i just hope uh you guys will continue the support that we've had uh it's been tremendous uh, i want to shout out to kurt harbsmeyer and michael cole for helping me understand uh all these laws and keeping me in the loop so that i can keep you guys in the loop and let you know what's been going on with these animals here in south florida so uh there you go guys i'm gonna leave you now with a few shots of her relaxing just kind of stretching out we'll get some b-roll and get it out there for you guys and maybe we'll just do a nice peaceful swimming with outro with our beautiful burmese python and albino burmese python princess buttercup i love this snake i've had it for a long time now and i'm so glad that there's now a little bit more hope for me to keep her and for us to learn more about these incredibly beautiful and misunderstood animals thanks guys so much for watching you have been also doing a great job helping out this channel by your views i just want to say thank you so much um it's really something that's uh, humbling and i just wanted to say thank you guys 
for everything that you've done because the views have been great. Uh, keep sharing, keep commenting, keep liking, and please uh, don't forget to uh, just be good to animals. All right, everyone. Talk to you soon. Take care.